Welcome to this quick presentation of the Insight Experience Replay algorithm. The starting point to present Insight Experience Replay is to figure out that a reinforcement learning agent that has not found any reward so far cannot learn anything. Okay? In fact, reinforcement learning agents can only learn from their success when they find some reward. Eventually, they may learn from failures in the case of negative rewards, but if you consider a problem where the only reward signal is positive, then an agent that has not found this positive reward signal won't learn anything. Whereas we, as humans, we are able to learn from our failures. This is a well-known example of the tarte tatin, which is said to be invented by mistake by sisters who put an apple pie upside down in the oven. Okay? So if we consider a learning agent whose goal is to reach a particular outcome, in the beginning this agent may often fail and if there is only re a positive re reward signal corresponding to the expected outcome, nothing happens. But in fact the failed experiment produced other outcomes than the one the, the agent was expecting. So this other outcomes can be turned into useful knowledge, and this is the essence of the Insight Experience re Replay algorithm. More precisely, Insight Experience Replay can be useful in two different contexts. The first is the one that I have just described, where the agent is targeting a difficult goal, okay, a sparse reward problem where only very few accurate policies can uh, succeed. In that particular case, without a reward signal, a model-free reinforcement learning agent produces something which is very inefficient, which corresponds to a random search. Okay, so it may take a long, long time before it finds the reward. And in that particular context, Insight Experience Replay will provide additional reward signals. The other case where Insight Experience Replay can help is the following, where the agent is targeting many goals at the same time. So this is the multitask or the multi-goal context, which is uh, a lot studied at the moment. In that case, if the agent is learning to achieve just one goal in isolation, this is very simply inefficient because by trying to achieve this goal, it, it might by chance um, achieve this one or this one or this one from time to time. Okay, So in that case, the Insight Experience Replay agent will be able to learn unexpected goals through its failures, which is not the case of the standard agent who, which does not use Insight Experience Replay. So let's go into the presentation of the technical uh, algorithm. To present it, we need four components. The first component is goal condition policies that I will present on the next slides. Then you did a mapping from the policy parameter space to the outcome space, and I will also describe this. And then you need any reinforcement algorithm like DQN, DDPG, TD3, um, PPO, SAC, etc. And you need that this reinforcement learning algorithm uses a replay buffer, but in that particular case, you will use a special case of replay buffer where you put some goal and you can substitute a goal by a different one. So first, let's see goal condition policies. Forget an instant about the red uh, things. What you see in black corresponds to the architecture of a DQN network or to the architecture of a DDPG network. So you can turn those architectures into goal condition policies just by adding some goal information into the representation of the agent. More precisely, instead of just considering the state, you will consider the state and the goal okay, as, a, some of, as some kind of extended state. Okay. And you will try to, in the case of uh, an extended DQN, you will try to evaluate the value of performing one particular action if your state was this one and your goal was this one. Okay, And the idea is that with such a network, if you change the goal, you, will may, you may eventually be able to generalize over different goals. And the same for the DPG. Okay? Here you, are, you have a critic that tells you how good it is to perform that particular action if your state is, is this one and the goal is this one. So that's that particular Q value. And then your actor will take as input a state and a goal and will provide you some action. And again, in, with such uh, architectures, you can have generalization over goals, okay? because 
that's exactly as generalization over state, you might be able to evaluate correctly or to perform the correct action in a state that you have not seen or for a goal that you have not seen yet. Okay. And those schemes, in fact, uh, are relying on previous work about universal value function approximators. That's uh, work from Tom Scholl, okay, which was anterior to the rise of uh, deep reinforcement learning uh, studies. Okay, so the first mechanism was goal condition policies. The second point is to consider this mapping between the policy parameter space. So you consider, for example, a deep neural network with some parameters. And if you are playing your deep neural network with these parameters in some environment, you might get a particular outcome that I will not O here. But the point is that you might by be targeting that particular goal. Okay, so what you do is that you select a particular uh, set of parameters, so the weights of your uh, neural network, the weights and biases. With this neural network, you will play some trajectory. This trajectory will be put into your replay buffer where, you, where each sample contains some state information, some goal information, some action, reward, and next state. Okay. And if the outcome is different from your goal, if you are considering a sparse reward problem where only being at the goal is rewarded, then the reward associated to this replay buffer is just zero everywhere. So the idea is that the agent targets a goal as outcome, it will produce another outcome O, and the trajectory is stored, but it produces no reward. Anyways, the agent can do something out of such information. And that's explained here. The idea is that the agent may pretend in its mind that in fact it was targeting the, tar the outcome it obtained. Okay, so it will consist in relabeling into the replay buffer the stored trajectory with the obtained outcome. Okay, but in that case, uh, what you obtain was the, the outcome you were targeting, so you would get some positive reward. And by training on this replay buffer with this positive reward, this will propagate value in your state action goal space through some generalization, and the agent competence will increase over unseen goals. So little by little, just by replaying outcomes that you have already obtained, you will be able to achieve goals that you were not capable of achieving beforehand because you get some additional reward signals that drives you toward the capability to uh, obtain unseen goals. In particular, there is a case where the goal space or the outcome space corresponds to the state space of the agent. In that case, you have obtained a, a complete trajectory, and from the, this trajectory, any state could be used as a goal to relabel your replay buffer. Okay, you might pretend that you were targeting that particular goal, the end of the trajectory, but also this one, or this one, or this one. So you will learn how to go there, or how to go there, or how to go there, etc. But you have to be aware that this is a very specific case, which is studied in the Insight Experience Replay paper. Uh, because in some cases, the outcome does not correspond to a state, and so you have to perform the whole trajectory so as to determine what's your uh, outcome. And also, if you can consider so many goals, then you get a trade-off between replayer more goals and trying more new actions. So if you just get one trajectory and you train a lot with this trajectory, maybe you won't see enough new information, so you might rather try to achieve completely different goals rather than replaying this trajectory many often. So if you play this trajectory too often, you might be overfitting to those particular replays. Uh, finally, let's see the properties of this insight experience replay mechanism. So the first point is that it looks like a model-based process, but you don't have a model of your MDP. Okay? Model-based reinforcement learning uh, corresponds to the idea when the agent, while it is acting in its environment, is trying to record what's happening. So it's recording the transition function of the underlying MDP. So for instance, this rat would be trying to put into its head a map of the maze. So then it, having this model, so this model of the transition function at, and of the reward function, it will be capable of just in its mind finding the right plan to decide what to do, okay? Um, 
we believe that uh, animals are able to do such things. Okay, we know that animals are able even to, uh, to do such things. Okay. And in the case of insight experience replay, very similarly, you can see that the agent is capable of replaying in its head the trajectories that it has played performed by changing the goal. So it's more or less trying new goal in its heads and figuring out how to achieve different uh, goals uh, this way. So that's a little different from model-based reinforcement learning, but as this has very similar properties. A second point is that Insight Experience Replay provides a form of implicit curriculum learning because the trajectories you will play in the beginning are probably the easiest one because that's the one that you can get from a random policy, for instance. So you will first learn to achieve the easiest goals and then by replaying with these goals, you will be able to learn to achieve more and more difficult goals. And moving from easy goals to more difficult goals is a form of curriculum learning. Okay. As I already said, as I have already said, using uh, insight experience replay provides additional re reward signals. So it helps you. Um, it helps the, the agent competence raise in the case of sparse reward signals where a standard reinforcement learning agent would not be capable of learning anything. Okay. And finally, it avoids using dense reward signals. If you are facing a sparse reward re signal problem, what you might do is to add an additional reward signal that will drive the agent towards the goal. But this additional reward signal might be deceptive. For instance, if you take this agent and the only reward is if you get out of the maze, you might add a dense reward signal that tells you that it's better to be closer to the goal. But if you are here, going closer to the goal will drive you here and this is a dead end. Okay, So this reward signal is deceptive because it drives you into the wrong direction. And using sparse reward signals and experience, uh, insight experience replay is a good way to avoid those problems with deceptive and dense reward signals. If you want to know more about insight experience replay, you might have a look at a few recent papers that use it. So a first instance is the Curious Architecture from Cédric Pola and a few colleagues. Okay. And in this particular work, Cédric was uh, combining achieving many goals. So that's the case of using Insight Experience Replay for using many goals, but it was also using learning to achieve different modules, so different big functions with these goals. Okay, and you can see in the architectures that here you have a goal substitution component, which is the one which is responsible for replaying trajectories with different goals. I won't go into the details. And let's say that Curious is a specific case of a more general framework, which is called uh, intrinsically motivated goal exploration processes, which is published in, the, in that particular paper. And there are also a few very recent papers about Insight Experience Replay. One is rewriting a story with inverse reinforcement learning, where the idea is that in what I have presented to you so far, we generally consider that this is the agent who sets its own goal. But if you want to imitate another agent, you don't know exactly what its goal was. So you might use inverse reinforcement learning to infer what was the goal of the agent when performing a particular pa trajectory. And by this inference process, you can get a list of potential goals and you will be able afterwards to relabel the experience you have collected with different trajectories with these different goals. And this will help you learn how to achieve many tasks just by using Insight Experience Replay with this inverse reinforcement learning mechanism. And you have also that generalized insight for reinforcement learning paper that provides some generalization about the way to acquire the signal in uh, insight reinforcement learning. And that's this paper. And if you look at it, you will find many more recent uh, references about insight experience replay. So thank you for listening. And don't hesitate to send questions at this address email.